Hey, I'm Jake, and for this video, I'll be sharing with you guys what I know so far about the 10.3.2 Logic Pro X update that just arrived for me a few minutes ago. It could have been an hour. But these are the release notes for Logic 10.3.2, and I'd advise just browsing through this. There seems to be a lot of bug fixes or other general stability improvements. Uh, there are a few a few new features, the three new drummers, and you can add drummer loops, but I'm going to go over what I've found out for myself so far. So I'll open Logic Pro X, and the first thing you'll notice is that the interface changes. And if you click the plus button, you'll notice this. For those of you who have updated your GarageBand OS application, you'll know this design already. We have a new genre, so before we just had these and the additional genre is the percussion genre so we'll go over that and just press create and audition them now you'll notice that you don't see the face of the smart drummer anymore that's because you have to open up the library which is at the top left of the logic display so you click library and at the top half of the library section, you have three new drummers, Isabella, Quincy, Finn. And at the bottom half, you have your library sound section, which is what you're normally used to. So you have coffee shop, Latin studio, you have your producer kits, and your performance patches. I'm not too sure what this does, so that's worth looking into. But this is just going to be a brief overview. So I'll just quickly browse through. Now, you might be noticing something. It's a lot more stable and smooth to change drummers, and that's a welcome improvement in Logic Pro X. The next thing you're going to notice is that when you scroll around, it's a lot more stable. For those of you who've, who may have watched my past live streams, you may have noticed that it was a bit laggy, especially with the piano roll when I opened it for the first time. So. It's a lot snappier, it reminds, me, it reminds me of Ableton's kind of vector scaling, and I really welcome this. Now if you drag over to the right of the audio region, there's a plus sign, and that's just to add another loop. So I'm just going to delete that. The other thing I wanted to share with you guys, uh, just ignore this, is a new improvement, I think, that most of us will welcome. So. I opened a Drum Machine Designer library sound from the library section in Logic Pro X. And if I programmed a drum pattern, before you couldn't bounce the Drum Machine Designer stack. You had to kind of separate it. It was a bit complicated. Well now you can just program your beat and you press Control B and you can bounce it. So. I really, really am happy about this. The next thing, the help section, it's really good for beginners. So my mouse is dragged over to the middle of the screen of the Logic Pro display, and it tells you it's the workspace. And it tells you this is the MIDI region, this is the name field track header, and if you open up a plugin, it gives you the detail of each knob. So this might be really handy when you're learning a new synthesizer. So this is the volume knob, cutoff, control knobs provide quick access to a sounds main. I really like the improvement and I like the new yellow graphic interface. Before it was uh, a little bit annoying. It had th these floating points. So when you go over to the question mark, it also just tells you the general layout of Logic Pro X, which is probably helpful if you're transferring from another DAW. So I really like this. And another thing that I think is really, really cool, if I just go to any sample 
end. I'll just drag a loop. Or you know what? Sorry about that. I will drag a drum sample. So let's just put this in every downbeat or first of every bar. So if you wanted to pitch this, you would have had to put it in a sampler and you would have had to pitch it in the EXS24. What I'm really happy about is that you can just highlight the regions now, press I, which opens up the inspector at the top left over here. And if you click the arrow with the region title, you can now transpose your audio samples and fine tune it. The way it does this is by automatic automatically guessing the audio file for what flex mode works. So that might be a good way to learn the flex modes, uh, the, the flex modes. And this one's using slicing auto. You have different ones, and it chooses different transpose settings based on what flex mode works. So I really welcome this for those of you who like dragging audio and working on drums that way. Uh, being able to pitch your drum samples natively, uh, not natively, but in the arrangement view as audio files, it's, it's a really welcome feature. Now, small little details. The retro synth, if you go to settings, it has a fourth modulation option so you can put in any MIDI channel control note I think that's what it's called MIDI CC and you can route it to a filter cutoff wave shape etc so that's just a little addition and I think the one that I really really just can't cover is the alchemy synth now the alchemy synth I just looked at it a bit. I read I read the notes, but this synthesizer is really hard. It's really difficult to get to know. So I'll open up a hair noise. And now you have the option of tuning it. But I know that there are other, I think, filter options. I'd s I'd suggest reading the notes, the Logic Pro X notes by Apple. I'll put them in the description. But a really cool thing, let me just clear the source. So now we have a saw wave, and I'll lower the volume. You can kind of downsample. So this is pretty cool. This is pretty noticeable. So if I put in the mix. I think it would be pretty cool to import EXS24 instruments and kind of play with the downsampling mode to get a cool vintage feel when you add other plugins. I'll definitely try that out in private. Um, now, I've noticed a few bugs. I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but if you press the plus arrow, it adds a loop. But I've mentioned a few, I, I've noticed a few bugs. The first thing is, if I go to percussion and I click this, for example, you'll see that the text is totally fine. But if I click synthesizer and I click pad, it's as if there's a retina pixelation error. But once I click, it all kind of goes back to normal. So that's one thing to keep in mind. I haven't found any bugs, but then again, it's been like 20 minutes for me. Uh, let's just quickly look over. There are other features, but I haven't really gone through it. So basically, I think the inf interface being snappier is a huge, huge welcome, and this will speed up my MIDI programming workflow. And the bounce, bouncing to audio for the drum machine designer, I really, really am happy about that. Uh, the three percussion, the three new smart drummers that might be useful, and we'll see. But Anyhow, I hope this video was insightful for those of you who aren't home yet, and I'm excited to know what you guys think about this, what you guys think of this update. Anyhow, I'm pretty tired. Take care.